The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go, Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Ambar Garcia, Brian Broadus, Patrick Walker, and Derek Eagleton. It is Wednesday, March 20th, 2024, season 19, episode number 116. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break Live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. And today we're talking free <laughs> we're talking free agency here. There she Welcome is. to the show, Amber. There uh, we're she talking is. Free, free agency. Had a little little spill there right before <gasps> so we went on the air. Uh, but but uh, we're, we're talking free agency today. And uh, as I think everybody in the in the Cowboys media world is talking about because of maybe not what's happened but what hasn't happened i think uh but i want to start first with that conversation i want to go around the table and give each of you guys an opportunity just to give your general thoughts on where the cowboys sit right now relative to what's happened in free agency from the standpoint of the players they've signed and the players that they did not sign let's start with you patrick Uh, this is a rough they're in a rough spot right now um it's not a spot they were unprepared to be in but it's a rough spot nonetheless I mean I was sitting there this morning and I was trying to figure out in recent memory when have I seen a situation where you have a combination of lack of outside free agents being added to the roster in combination with such a hemorrhaging of in-house talent going to other teams and and I'm kind of at a loss as far as when recently this has happened prior to this year Uh, so they're in a bad spot I mean you, you know I like the the addition of Eric Kendricks, and I love even better that they stole him away from the San Francisco 49ers. Um, you know, weaken your enemy to make yourself stronger. Love that. But that's the only outside signing that's occurred because they're up against some salary cap crunches, but we talked about it last week. I mean, there are triggers that can be pulled. They are soft pulling those triggers. They pulled one on Zach Martin. They did a rework on Dak Prescott, got about 4 or $5 million, but you could get more be it with an extension or a full-on restructure nonetheless. But you haven't brought in anyone other than Eric Kendricks. You've lost uh, Tyron Smith, which was a massive loss. We talked about that to the New York Jets. You lost Dorrance Armstrong, someone that I feel has been perennially perennially underrated on this roster. I'm fine with loser Tyler Biadish, but it's still a spot that you need to fill now. Um, And I'm missing another guy. Who's my other guy? Tony Tony Pollard. To to, um, to Nashville, to the Tennessee Titans. So, I mean, right now you got Jordan Lewis, wonderful. That's a key reacquisition. C.J. Goodwin, special teams ace. Trent Sieg, yeah, everybody needs a long snapper. But it's been wildly underwhelming, and they're going to have to really start making some splashes. I'm keeping some eyes on a guy like Stephon Gilmore to try to um, at least make me feel better about what I'm seeing because right now it's it's looking real bad uh well for me after you listed all those guys it just feels like we they haven't gotten any better like it doesn't feel like we're a better team right now than uh when the season ended so that's my problem is we sit here and we start getting expectations and you start saying okay now the the expectations are very, very high to the point where it literally doesn't matter what you do in the season. Let's wait until the postseason, see what they can actually do in the playoffs. But then we get to the free agency and then you start seeing and realizing how money tight there really are. And I think when Jerry Jones went in and, and made the comment about being all in and that whole phrase took a whole... <laughs> Like a whole new world, like it, that just it got over exploded, and I know he was kind of referring to like those bigger contracts and the guys that they have in house, Dak Prescott, CD, Micah, guys like those. But when you take that phrase and fans take it and go along with it and start creating their own individual expectations, and then you get to free agency and don't see any moves, any splashes I think it's very it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good I understand the business aspect of it but right now if I'm being 100% honest nothing about what's happened makes me feel like this season it's gonna have a different ending and I can be absolutely wrong free agency is not over the season hasn't even started training camp hasn't even started the draft hasn't happened 
but it's just it's hard to envision a team that will be better despite the coaching changes that have occurred right now. It's just I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm I, I don't want to say this, but I, I'm not motivated right now. Oh, you know? real quick before throwing to Brian, that's what I was forgetting. Jonathan Hankins expected to sign with the Seattle Seahawks, so yep. you're also you. losing your one yeah. tick. All right, Brian. Yeah, I think the thing that I I focus on is that it's it's going to put a tremendous amount of pressure on the scouts to build their board the right way and to have a draft. And last year, and we'll see what the, the verdict will be on this past draft, uh, they didn't get the production that they've gotten from players in the past. And that that you know that, that in itself, and, and if you talk to those scouts in that room, they'll tell you they've got to focus in on, you know, there's going to be a lot of needs that they're going to have to address. How flexible are they going to be able to take the best available player? When they've drafted by taking the best available player, it's worked out really, really well for them. They know how to plug and play offensive linemen in the first round. That's something that they can take care of. But you have to kind of look at where they are right now. And I think if you go back and look at dead money, you look at dead money in some of these contracts. You look at a dead money contract of Ezekiel Elliott. You know, you look at a dead money contract now soon of Ty- uh, Tyron Smith. Dorrance Armstrong is going to have fifteen, uh, uh, you know, a, a one point five million dollar dead money. Kelvin Joseph, second round pick, <laughs> didn't work out. Dead money right there, almost a million dollars right there. You know, so you know, Michael Gallup going to be a dead money. You're going to get some savings, but there's going to be dead money there. You know, this is where, you know, and I think that to, to me, that's where some of the signings that haven't worked out for them is coming back and getting them right now as we speak. That they've, you know, that some of these guys that they put, you know, they gave contracts to does not, is not worked out. And now they're dealing with that, with the ramifications of that. And I think that's unfortunate. I think they're dealing with also, too, they've drafted really well. The contracts didn't get staggered, they didn't get the fifth year on DAC. There's just so many things playing against them right now. You know, just think if they didn't get the extra $30 million from that cap. You know, this <laughs> yeah. team might yeah. be even in worse shape, yeah. you know, but they're going to let them draft, and that's the one thing that they're really, really good at, and that's that's going to be your biggest hope right now if you're a Cowboy fan. Yeah, to your point, one of the interesting things for me is you look at this <laughs> from the standpoint, how many teams – end up in a situation where their first and second round draft picks, when the shades come on, when the first and the second round pick <laughs> quickly in, in, a, in a given year both turn into all pros that deserve big contracts, right. which is what happened to them with CD and with Trayvon. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's a great problem to have. It is. But it is a problem because yeah. financially now you have to do that and then you follow that up with maybe one of the best top three or four defensive players in the league in Michael Parsons that you mm-hmm. draft, you know, thereafter, right? It's, right? it's those kinds of things that, like you said, those aren't things you really can stagger. Like you are, you are, you are a victim at that point of your your own success, right? Your ability to draft really well now is costing you, yeah. and it's going to affect right. the rest of this roster because you got to take care of those really big stars that you got, those all pro type players yeah. that you got. I think the thing with Dak has been, and I, you know, I give Todd France credit. He he's he's negotiated very tough. He's made it very difficult on Dallas. He's got his guy back to the table very quickly after we went through all this. So, yeah, there's a lot of things, you know, that they're having to deal with. But the, the draft part of it is is something that they, you know, what they, they don't run away from that. I think the bigger problem, and there's a couple of things, too. I think fans are still disappointed about what happened in Green Bay with that game, the, the Green Bay game. Absolutely. But I think fans also look at Eagle, the Philadelphia Eagles, who you have a similar roster, too, if you if you – ask people around the league whose roster would you rather have and I think their scouts would say give me Philly give me Dallas give me Philly give me Dallas Dallas Philly you know they, it's yeah. it's a very similar roster and then all of a sudden Philly is now churning their roster and you're going whoa whoa wait a minute now we were very equal to Philadelphia you know with you look at cap expenditures and paying a quarterback and all this how do they get to churn their roster and still have cap space you know, and then, you know, and, and Howie, Howie Roseman, the GM there, he's a kick the can guy. I mean, they'll, but it always seems like he's a kick the can, but then again, they're signing four or five guys. Mm-hmm. I think that's where Cowboy fans look at. They don't worry about the commanders or what the Giants are doing. It's the Eagles. You look at the Eagles and like, wait a minute, we got a roster just like theirs. How are they have $38 million? And I'm sure somebody will text me here in the next five minutes and try and explain it to me. But that's, you know, that's the thing I think that fans really look at and say, 
you know, how, how do they, how are they able to have cap space, pay all their players and still go out and get players? And that that's something that you the, know, that the question you have to ask. And the question is, is is that because they're still in a position where they can continue to kick the can? And by the way, the Cowboys have also been kicking the can. They've done it they in have. a different way. Yeah. Now that's all coming due. <laughs> now right? all the cans are yeah. stacking yeah. up. It's, at, in it's the same at a point spot. now yeah. where right. they've only you only can kick the can for so long. Right. And at some point you got to pay the bill. And I think that right. may be where the Cowboys are. And it may be coming for Philly. In the future, at some point, but yeah, but for I, Dallas right now, it looks like that's where they are. I can't tell you, and I'm not a cap expert. I never was, never, never liked the numbers. Never just, you know, I tried to find players, and however Adam and those guys wanted to sign him, Todd Williams, you yeah. guys do that. But I, I, I think it's something. To, it's amazing to me is though that that we they, I keep on the radio talking about impending doom for the Philadelphia Eagles, and it's never impending doom, <laughs> you know. And and there's going to be a point in time where I can't talk about like. Well, cap hell. They've paid all those defensive backs. They lost all. They, they got all those defensive linemen. They've got the, one of the best offensive lines. They got to pay that. They got a quarterback. They got to pay now. And then all of a sudden, they're adding one of the most expensive running backs to their their room. And you're going, wait a minute. Okay, that's not very cap smart, but but they are adding the best running back to their team. Yeah, that's out there. But it does come due at some point. We saw it happen with the Rams. The Rams went all in, and it came due. And, they won a and, Super and they Bowl. Had to, yeah, exactly. They, they won a Super and Bowl, and then they had to they had to pull it back. They pulled it back, and they yeah. got back in the playoffs. Exactly. So exactly. see, that's I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. If you if, but this to me, I've said this before on several platforms. I never see this team being bad as long as they let these guys draft. I think they'll always be the draft that, will always be the thing yeah they'll always them, be yeah. that nine and eight team they'll, they could always be a bad year for them unless something happens injury wise they'll always be like a nine and eight team yeah and you know what that yeah that, that to me that's fine but I you know the Rams sure Rams went all in did everything gave up all their draft picks and you know and now they're you know they got to a Super Bowl won a Super Bowl heck I would take that now if I was a Cowboy fan. Yep. I would absolutely take that. It's the the timing of it is is just horrendous for the Cowboys as far as optics go. Because if the Cowboys had made some semblance of a playoff run, um, because all of this that's happening right now, it's it's likely it was inevitable anyway that they yeah. probably wouldn't pick up anybody from the outside for the most part. That they would hemorrhage guys from the inside that would leave for other teams. So let's assume that this part that we're talking about was inevitable anyway. If you change the the playoff outcome, maybe if you get to the NFC Championship and then you're losing these pieces. Yeah. The fans are looking at it a lot differently. Yeah. They're like, oh, God, well, we hate to see, you know, lose that guy, but we'll, we'll re-up. We'll re-up in the draft. We got to the NFC mm-hmm. Championship. But when you lose yeah. in the fashion in which you lost at home in the playoffs against the Green Bay Packers, and then you have not only inaction, you're losing. So to Amar's point, you're moving backwards every other day with the talent you're losing and you're not replacing this talent. And like Brian said, it puts so much stress on the scouts and the scouting department to try to have one of the best drafts yeah. that you've ever had in franchise and history. And hope that all these rookies and hope that can that all do these rookies and the second year yeah. guys take these massive leaps. That's that's a lot to try to digest if you're a fan. And I really, honestly, I think it's too much to ask fans to digest. So between now and the draft, I really hope that whether it be Stephon Gilmore and or a combination of uh, a notable outside acquisition. I think the fans and this roster, you know, Mike Zimmer, he's coming in. He's on a one-year deal. McCarthy, one year, well, final year of his deal. Dak's not extended just yet. I think that there are moves that need to be made before the draft arrives. Let's take our first break. When we come back, what I want to talk about is I want to really zero in on the conversation around the stars of this team. And because when you look at the, the stars, I'm talking the all-pro caliber players we mentioned a little earlier, I, my question would be, is that better or as good as any team in the NFL? And when you have that number of very high caliber players, is it just the expectation that you're going to have to have a roster that's going to have to be filled in the rest of the way with lower price guys, which means it's going to rec- rely on the draft? And if so, is that the right formula? We'll talk about that when we come back. DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 
5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot, Rowdy, cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app, only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice-cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear Doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a shoulder to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks, girl. Better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back to the break. All right, how about this one? Uh, Kenny Chesney. He's going to the Sun Goes Down Tour 2024. Ambar, if you're really interested, now I know you are. Kenny Chesney mm-hmm. is bringing his Sun Goes Down Tour 2024 with Zach Brown Band and special guest Megan Maroney and Uncle Cracker to AT&T Stadium on May 11th. Tickets are on sale now at SeatGeek.com, the official ticket partner of AT&T Stadium. Welcome back. Second segment of the break. Live from the SWBC <laughs> Mortgage Studios at the Star. One of the more uh, uncomfortable name of a performer hey, ever. I'm glad you You're, were reading that and not me. Right. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> that step I'm the glad, yeah. <laughs> we'll keep going. We'll keep moving on on that one. Um, okay, so um, as I was teeing up before the break, um, this team, I think, is is blessed with a lot of really great talent. Um, and, and quite frankly, when you look at all the guys they lost, for me, there's not a single guy in that. Maybe you could have, have an argument with Tyron Smith, but there's really not anybody else in that list that I'm like, man, that's a huge loss. Cowboys, I don't know what they're going to do. It's really the sum of the parts. It's as you said, you know, Patrick, it's like you're, you're not gaining anybody, but you're losing all right. these. And by the way, a lot of these are depth pieces, and that's the part that, that's more concerning. But that all being said, when you look at the level of t- talent that they have, of people that you would consider to be among the best at their position across the league. You got CD, you've got uh, Tra- Trayvon, you've got uh, Dak, you've got Micah Parsons, you've got a guy like Deron Bland who's popped on the scene and is considered one of the better cornerbacks in the league. You've got Zach Martin, uh, you've got uh, you know young guys like Ferguson who right, are starting to right. step up, right? You've got talent, and some of that talent is really really high level talent. Is this this, what we're seeing right now? Is that just the nature of what happens on a team when you have that much high level talent that you have to pay big dollars and that forces you then to be able to have to fill the rest of your roster with cheaper options, which means bargain basements and free agents and relying on the draft? I'd say yes, it does lean to that. Um, The problem I have with it is I don't think that they should lean as hard into it as they do as far as um, trying to rely, not solely, but we're not going to say solely because that will make us prisoners of the moment. I mean, this time last year they had traded for Brandon Cooks and Stephon Gilmore, so they've been active in free agency, surprisingly so, um, over the past several years. It's just this particular— Although those weren't free agent signings, no, fair enough, and that's fair different, but, right? they, yeah. but they were action. It was action, though. It was, there was action. During this time of year, but the point yeah, is it, it wasn't money they were spending in free agency, and I think that's a fair clear enough. distinction that needs to be made. I, I think something you— you mentioned in the first segment when you said, are they now victims of their own success? I think that that's going to often be the case when you draft and develop so well. Um, but because in then being a victim of that success, you're now a prisoner of that success and that you can never relent on being successful in that. Because mm-hmm. when those bills come due, eventually you might lose this guy, that guy, or you might have to sacrifice depth or go into bargain basement shopping so that you can keep Micah plus CD plus Trayvon plus Dak plus Zach plus, you know, dot, 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 dot. Which means, going back to the first point, 
you have to continue to draft exceptionally well. And that's what makes this offseason a little bit more concerning when you look at, yes, the jury is still out on the 2023 draft. We're not going to put grades on any of those guys just yet, but the onus is on those guys, like the Eric Scotts, the Mozzie uh, Smiths, the the schoolmakers, you know, Vinami Hoko, for those guys to step up and take on a big leap uh, in year two, because if they don't, then now you're looking at the rookies in 2024 and you're saying, okay, well, they're not doing it, so you have to do it. It's just it's so much pressure, and the Cowboys do scout well, and they do draft well, but if you're asking every single one of your draft picks to hit from minute one, you're asking too much because that's not realistic. I'll take it a step further than that. How about Sam Williams? Mm, how about it? How about Chauncey Golston? Yeah. You know, how about Jalen Tolbert? You know? I mean, we're focusing on Mozzie Smith and these guys like that, rightfully so. Mm-hmm. But how about those other guys? Fair enough. You know, that's kind of where this thing's at right now. You know, I've been waiting for Sam Williams, you know, to – I mean, Sam Williams is one of the most talented football players. And I've laughed about the David Irving and how talented – if you play a certain amount of plays and he makes like six tackles and 12 plays – Sam Williams has that kind of capability, but Sam Williams will also do some crazy, wild things <laughs> that'll get you beat. You know, I'm glad you held back on that. Yeah, the word you wanted to say, but go ahead. I, if I was on a podcast, right. I'd let it fly. <laughs> you let it fly. <laughs> but the the thing about it is, I'm waiting for Chauncey Golston. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know they keep moving him around. They can't yeah. figure out if he's an edge or he's a th- he's a three technique. Is what is he? You know, Jalen Tolbert. You know, I mean, I saw little flashes from you. From last year. The one guy that we've seen that's kind of been that guy that is Jake Ferguson. Yes. Draft Jake Ferguson. Jake Ferguson. It's like, well, how do you get rid of Dalton Schultz? Mm -hmm. Because you got Jake Ferguson. Right. You'd miss a beat. Jake Ferguson's the one guy that's elevated his game while everybody else is like in the deep end of the pool trying to keep from drowning. So to me, those are the guys. It's yeah. Is it on Mozzie Smith? Is it on Luke Schoonmaker? Is it on Overshone? Is it on Fajoko? Yes. But those guys that came before them, it's on them too. That's fair. See, with me, uh, I have a big problem that I've come to realization now. And it's, uh, okay, come on with it. Epiphany. Yeah, yeah. Come on yeah. With it. They, they draft really well, yeah. and we all know that. They're really talented at doing that. But draft and develop. W- develop, what does that mean? That equals time. Yes, that it does. equals to. Take our time to develop guys. Yeah. When they draft and, and they've gone they've gone by during free agency, not spending a ton of money on outside people, just kind of retaining their own and then leaning towards the draft. But every year you get a new roster. Every year you lose somebody. Somebody leaves. This year, for example, Tyron Smith. Now he's gone. And you have to start <sighs> I think they lean towards the whole develop part a little too much, which then it's not, for example, I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say. That is clearly it makes total sense in my head. But look at what the roster was at the end of this season. We saw a pretty well formulated roster with areas that did need improvement. Mm-hmm. You take that and then you should add talent in those areas that you're lacking. For example, what do you need to stop the run? Get a, also a linebacker, yeah, linebacker defensive tackle. tackle yeah. And then, but but you cannot rely on just drafting young talent. That's where I'm going towards. Like, finally, you you should be able to make a change in spending some actual money. And again, it doesn't matter what I have to say because they just don't have the money for it. But that's when you look at it and, and change your mentality of things. Or for example, is there going to be a hurt guy in the draft in the second round that they decide to, you know, yes, like th- yes. those type of Brooks. things <laughs> that they decide to, His name's to, Brooks. Yeah, to gamble on okay. and think, oh, well, we can't. And, and it has worked out sometimes, but it's about the now. And that's the issue. That's what I'm struggling with, kind of envisioning how things play out this year, because I don't think anybody's going to really be immediate help. But let me ask you this, and I'm playing devil, devil's advocate here. There were two, in my opinion, there were two positions at the end of last season that I was like, Cowboys got to do something here. And that was linebacker Mm -hmm. and that was defensive tackle, particularly Mm -hmm. the one technique. Because that, in my opinion, was the reason why they lost the playoff game, Mm -hmm. right? Um, They went out and addressed linebacker 
and got Eric Kendricks. They've upgraded their linebacker position. The only position on the team you can argue they've upgraded, they, they right? Absolutely they've have. upgraded yes. their linebacker position. You got Overshone coming back. You probably feel pretty decent about your linebacker position right now, right? Relative to all the other stuff that's going on. Okay. Relative. Relative, yeah, relative to everything else. You feel you pretty go. good. Relative. Okay, not okay. pretty good. Yeah. Just okay. okay. So and the and the other part to it Need is <laughs> and, and this is what I don't know. When Zimmer came in the door, my suspicion is one of the first questions he was asked was what is your plan for Mozzie Smith? Yes. What is your evaluation of Mozzie Smith yes. and what is your plan for him? My assumption is that the response to that made them feel like Mozzie Smith is going to be the guy, good or bad, that they're going to ride with at the, as their one technique. True. And that being said, <laughs> in their minds, again, I'm, I'm in their minds. I'm confirming minds. what you're saying. Right. So in their minds, in their minds, they addressed the two positions that going into the offseason, we all just agreed were the two biggest positions that they have to address, right? If you look at it from through their eyes, right? right. I'm, what, what I'm saying through is their eyes, through their it, eyes, it, it this is how they're looking at it. Is uh-huh. that an unfair way for? Is that a good way for them to look at it, or what are the problems with them looking at it that way? The problem with, I, again, I love that they brought in Kendricks. Uh, once he was released, he was one guy I wanted to see brought in, mm-hmm. and they did that. So thank you so much for that. Um, defensive tackle, though, until you see the. Until you see Mozzie Smith making the strides, it's hard for me to say he's ready right now. But if you don't bring in another nose tackle to help him out, whether it had been Jonathan Hankins or another veteran, whatever the case may be, DJ Reader, who's off the board now, then you're basically saying that 2024 is going to be Mozzie Smith starting nose tackle. But hold up just a second. If you, if you have a first-round pick from last year, and you're trying to admit, push yeah, him I mean, up I into that role, you need then, then whoever, there, but... whoever you would have as his backup isn't going to be one of those top-line guys. You don't want somebody that's going to steal reps from him. You want somebody that's a that's a, an insurance policy. Those aren't the guys you get early in free agency. Those are the guys you get later. You get those guys in May, in June, maybe even heading into training camp, right? So, so what am I missing there? In, in that capacity, it's just I think I'm looking at how far down the line are we talking about getting that particular guy? Is it okay. a draft pick? Is it a fourth, fifth round draft pick? Because you can get a pretty decent one technique in the fourth, fifth, sixth round because that's not a position that's drafted early all the time, right? True. But if you're going to do it as a fourth or fifth rounder, then obviously, as you guys know, the later you get into the rounds, then the less likely that that's going to hit. So you're still going to have to address it with a veteran, I would say, ideally. Yeah. Uh, and if you wait until, you know, just before training camp and you get a guy or you get a guy in training camp, what what level mercenary are you getting in training camp versus what level mercenary you'd get in early April or late March? That's what I mean. So if you even if you look at, okay, let's just let's go with Jonathan Hankins, because that's the familiar face, right? Even if you were able to retain Jonathan Hankins, you could have possibly retained Jonathan Hankins with the understanding that they were going to push Mozzie Smith as the starting nose nose tackle for twenty twenty four. You think you could have? I think you could have swung that. I don't know that he would have bought it. But right, that's, that's yeah, my point. Like, do you think he would have gone yeah, you could have that. swung it. Yeah. Because, I mean, he's at that kind of stage in right. his career, right? He's like, if I'm playing, I'm but playing. Then, but then I think then what counters that is it's Aiden Dirty looking at him in Seattle and saying, or you could come as right. Aiden That's my point. Like, he's got, he's got other so op- opportunities. My, my question is simply being, when would they address that? Because if you're, as it stands, if you go in to the draft, and yeah, let's say you use a fourth or fifth round pick. Okay, cool. Fourth or fifth round pick, that's going to back up Mozzie Smith. But you got to assume that that fourth or fifth round pick probably won't be ready to contribute year one. Let's just assume good news and they're ready to contribute year two. That's fine. But that also means Mozzie is kind of on an island because Neville's going. Neville's in Miami. Okay. Chauncey is going to have to have a big year, and it's a contract season for him. So to Brian's point, Chauncey, where are you at? It's time for you to step up. But he's more the, three anyway. Yeah, so, so that doesn't just that. Yeah. So then what do you got? You got also kind of moving back and forth. I just I don't like the situation as it stands. And they I, need depth. Right. And I wouldn't want the depth to be addressed. I wouldn't want them to wait until late June, early, mid-July to address the depth from a veteran standpoint. I want veteran insurance behind Mozzie to say, you know what, number one, to push Mozzie to be better, to be ready to be that guy in 2024. But also, if whatever may happen and he struggles, you can say, okay, well, let's let's mix up this rotation a little more to get this veteran guy in to make sure we're stopping the run as we're still bringing Mozzie along. I just don't want Mozzie on an island, not, not yet. That's what bothers me about it. I think uh, you have too much confidence, Derek. No, I don't. Uh, what I'm doing, no, what I'm doing. Here's the deal. Uh, I think sometimes, and, and this happens. Advocate. This happens a lot in the media. Fair, there's, but there's a certain narrative, and then everybody just says the narrative. And I, what I'm trying to do, and I, this is what I want our show to be, obviously, all the time, is I want us to think about things fully 
And and really, if if that is the way they're looking at it, then I want us to address the way that they're looking at it and say what we think can be the challenges for that. Which That's is my a, point. which is a fair fair argument, but it's just I'm I'm like Patrick on this one right now because if we sit the if we watched all the games, we we watched the whole season, and I don't think personally I won't speak for you guys, but personally, finishing the season, it's not a spot where I feel confident to ge- to Agreed. give. Mazi Smith, that type of responsibility and role just yet because he hasn't proven that. So again, when you're talking about the the immense like importance and how crucial this specific season is for the Cowboys, that's a huge gamble and risk that you're willing to take at a very, very important position on defense. That's fair. But, and no offense to anybody at this table, myself included, if Mike Zimmer comes in the door and says... Mozzie Smith can do this. I yeah. know he can do this. Yeah. Then who are we to say, I don't feel comfortable? That's well, that's yeah. okay, but that's it's Mike Zimmer. He says he thinks he can get the guy ready. By the way, that's what he's being paid to do. If that's his assessment, you give him that response, you give him that responsibility and hold him accountable to it. But I would trust his opinion way over, more than, than our opinion yeah. on the player, right? I remember a clip on DallasCowboys.com from the war room, Will McClay standing up and fighting for Mozzie Smith, that he could be that guy. If that's the case, they need to put Mozzie Smith out and there. He and he could be. He I, could be. Whether we feel comfortable yeah. or not, they picked Mozzie Smith. Yeah. They picked him. And they felt like that Mozzie Smith, at 329 pounds at the time, could be a, a guy <laughs> that could. Uh, yeah, at the time. Yeah. You know, it's impressive how much weight he lost. No doubt. I'd like, I'm like, that that one, I'd love yeah. to know what he did. <laughs> but, you know, the, the thing Super about it is, though, that's, that's them, you know? And I'll say this, though, they have job security over there. And I hate to be that guy, but it's true. They're not going anywhere. They pick Mozzie Smith. They need to play Mozzie Smith. That's the way it is. But and, not so, Mike doesn't. Mike doesn't. Have, Mike 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 Zimmer doesn't have. You know what? Security. But that, that's what I'm saying, though. And you know what? Mike is. They can't change everything out. Yeah. They're not going to change it. They're 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 hoping they're hoping that Mike Zimmer can come in here and get Mozzie Smith playing at a high level. That's what their hope is right now. If it doesn't if it doesn't work out. Staff will move on. Players move on. You have to make a decision about Mozzie Smith, whether you know you need to do something differently there. But they, they, they honestly, they don't have a choice. They don't have a choice. Did you say DJ Reader signed with somebody? I saw, Since, I saw he went off the board. I thought he did too. I thought he signed with someone. Okay. I don't know who, but I thought I, I thought I saw that. I, I could be wrong. It, it would have been everything's last, flying around so fast. I know that's what yeah. I was the same yeah, thing. Lions. And, and okay, with him and uh, Ashawn yeah. Robinson yeah, was another one. Great, yeah, see, DJ Reader would have been a great. Would have been a great signing for them. Yeah, they don't agreed. have the money to to sign to sign even to sign a guy like that. Yeah. So to me, it's they they have made their bet with who they've drafted, you know, and that's on them. And they they believe right or wrong that Mozzie Smith could play one technique in this league. Let's see. see? We don't have confidence. No, yeah, we don't yeah, have yeah. confidence. But you know what? We're sitting here doing radio. They're drafting players, well, and that and you don't have to believe what they're doing over there, but you know what? That's 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 what it is right now. That is until things change. That is the way it is right now. Yep. This is a totally different situation, but just to use that as an example, for years, Tyron Smith and his situation. How many times we would end the season, go to training camp, and be talking? Well, have they? Ba- have they gotten some kind of cushion or a backup that can be a legit backup for him when he has an injury again and has to go out? In many, many years, that wasn't the case. That was not ever the case until last year at times. Um, I thought those backups did a pretty good job in the way they handled when he was out. But it's just kind of going to that, like, you know the situation, but how are you kind of preparing yourself for worst case scenario type of deal or if this doesn't pan out who do we actually have to be able to give some extra and, and that's boost what, and that's what's concerning to me and and really quickly if if Mozzie did not drop that weight then fans and analysts such as such as ourselves would probably be more confident in the likelihood of him taking a step forward in year two because then you could say oh well he only needs to work on his get off for example or he only needs to work on learning the playbook a little bit more okay fair enough but when you throw into the uh, the mix that he's dropped so much weight that he now has to reapply that weight in order to be an effective nose tackle while also quickening his get off while also deepening his knowledge of the playbook that's what makes it more concerning and that's why and I'm gonna get 
again, I'm not saying that Mozzie Smith cannot be an impact guy in this league. I believe he can if Zimmer can turn him around and everything can come to fruition like it needs to. But there are too many variables as we have the conversation working against the argument of saying, oh, well, it's Mozzie and that's who we got. No, it needs to be Mozzie and insurance. Yeah, and by the, but by, I, I do think the, the other thing you got to factor in, though, when you talk about that insurance is – you know, you could get to June, you could get to July, and the Cowboys could make a trade. Like, they may not have a lot of money uh, against the cap to be able to go out and sign a free agent, mm-hmm. but in the same way they got Jonathan Hankins, they can find a team that's like, you know, this veteran guy, we don't know that we necessarily want to have him long term. We'd be willing to give up that player for a pick, and, and then you find your guy. Like, I think uh, all I'm saying is I agree with you that they're going to have to do more from a depth standpoint, but when you look at it from the standpoint of who their starters are going to be day one, um, I think they feel like we got the guys that we're going to roll with. And 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 for right or wrong, they yeah. got the guys that they're going to roll with, yeah. and we'll get to see what they can do. I personally think with Mozzie Smith, I think he overcorrected. I think he's hearing all yeah. that about, I need to get off, get off, get off. Oh, if I'm lighter, maybe I get off faster. I think and it was I think, too much in I, his own Exactly, head. and yeah. I, think, I think that happened to him, and I think sometimes it happens with rookies. They're trying to acclimate to the NFL. And they can find themselves in tough situations because they're just searching for answers. And if there's not the right coach in their ear giving them the right information and guiding them, they will end up in a path way off the you track. You can watch Chris Jenkins, who's plays three technique for Michigan, and he has the same problem in this draft. The get off? Get off. Is that a Michigan thing? It's a Michigan thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's an absolute Michigan thing. I'm sitting there watching tape. I'm like, oh, look, Chris Jenkins has the same problem as Mozzie Smith had. Yeah. You know, it's the way they play their scheme. You know, it, it is. They play a tick late. They read, they react, and then they go. That's yeah. what they do. So, you know, and I think I think it really affected Mozzie, though. I think that it, it, deep down inside, I think all the criticism hurt him. I do. I, I just, you know, just, you know, you, the, the way that maybe, you know, the, the, the weight loss, what we're talking about, his reaction, just this, you know, sudden – way of doing things I, I think that I think emotionally he got a little scarred by all the the the, the criticism of yeah. him in this uh this year and that's what makes me think it gives me at least some hope that you put another uh, another voice in his ear that yeah. maybe is kind of working with him yeah. and and getting and building him up a bit maybe they can get out of him what they expected let's take our final break when we come back I want to get a quick uh scouting report on Eric Kendricks and what he can bring to this team and maybe the areas that that maybe he doesn't have uh, a lot to add and, and where the Cowboys may need to supplement that. We'll talk about that when we come back. DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savanna. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Don't put off getting your oil change, Dallas. Take 5 Oil Change. A proud partner of the Cowboys is faster than you think. There's no appointment needed and no waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take 5 is so fast, you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take 5's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Dallas area. And remember, at Take 5, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. Take 5, the official oil change of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code Cowboys VIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboys VIP. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back to the break.
Okay, Pro Shop. Spring cleaning calls for spring refresh. Head to the Pro Shop near you or log on to shop.dallascowboys.com. A Fanatics experience and brighten up your Cowboys wardrobe for this 2024 uh, season with the best gear in the game. All right, we're back. Final segment of the break. We got about a little under three minutes. Did you get blockchain any credit there? No, but we're going to take this segment and give it to blockchain. Brought to you by (laughs) blockchain.com. There we go. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. Sure. I love that our team looks out for each other. Yeah. I was about to hit it, too. All right. Brian, uh, give me a quick scouting report on Eric Kendricks. Yeah, probably a step slow than what he was in the past. He was an all-pro for Mike uh, Zimmer a while back. But he's still – the thing about, I think, the flow of the way he plays is really good. Um, He's not the same guy he was with the Minnesota Vikings. But if you talk about a guy that could step up, fill gaps, take people on, solid tackler – uh, like I say, the flow is there, the movement's there, the getting off the blocks, avoiding blocks is there. Sometimes the ball get to the edge and he just just misses it. But other times he'll make the play. I think he's a much better pass rusher now than he is a cover guy. So I would try and incorporate him more in that play in that type of way. If you want to bring him as the extra blitzer, uh, I think that would be a really good thing to, for him. I don't know how much coverage that you really, really want to put him in overall. But as far as the tackling, the toughness, getting to the football, getting step laid on a little bit, it's not an all-the-time thing, but you do see it happen to him occasionally. But still a good player. But he, he one time in his career for Mike Zimmer, he was an all-pro player. Is, and and he could, uh, he's, he's not at that level, though. Is it possible that what you're seeing on tape as far as him being a tick slow at times yep. could be a result of the fact that that was a new system for him last year? Or do you I think did, he I, really no, has I, slowed I just, down. I just think that I just think there were times where when you used to watch Kendrick's play, where it was he was already to the edge. Yeah. And he was he was he he reads things still really well. And I talk about the flow. Sometimes the linebackers they get caught up and stuff. Mm-hmm. He's he's got the flow down. Part of it is where's that burst, that extra little burst to kind of close the play out there when it gets to the edge. Anything right at him, he's going to be just fine at. Yeah. Is he the best linebacker on the team this right early now. right yes. now? Yes. yes, the answer is yeah. yes. Well, he knows. That's an upgrade. You know, and it, and it's a benefit for him too. Yeah. You know, if he would have gone to San Francisco, he would have been playing behind those outstanding linebackers they have. You know, well, well Bowman's going to miss some time, I would assume, right? Well, th- yeah, probably a little bit. You know, Did uh, I say Bowman. You said Bowman. I'm sorry, I was not meaning Navarro Bowman. Uh, I'm talking the other. Who was the other the other linebacker that got hurt? Greenlaw. 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 Yeah, yeah. Greenlaw. Yeah. So and Bowman, Bowman was way yeah. back in the day. I know, right? Y'all looked at him like <clears throat> Bowman. Okay, he's been out of the league for a while. But see, but yeah. That, that to me, though, I kind of feel like, though, that him coming in here and knowing Mike's system is a huge benefit for him. Yeah. He doesn't have to go and learn a completely another system, again, even though he learned a system you know, with the, with the Chargers there and what he was able to do. But the familiarity he has with Mike, the calls, he can help uh, others around him. That's, that's a benefit. When guys like – when Overshone has a question on why, and then you know, Kendricks could say, this is why. You yeah. know, and he can explain that. And whoever else that they draft, there's plenty of there's uh, plenty of linebackers in this draft. Some of them are banged up, some of them are nicked up, but they're going to pick one. They're going to pick one here. And so, you know, you're going to have probably a couple of linebackers, and even Damone Clark is going to young linebacker too. That's going to have to kind of pick some things up too. So having Kendricks here on this, I think, could help overall what they're trying to do. Yeah, yeah he's. I don't, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say he's instantly, instinctually. He's your best linebacker right now. Um, as far as just playing the ball, he's your best linebacker right now. And uh, Brian touched on a point that I wanted to bring up really quickly, the the ability to mentor as well and help these young linebackers acclimate to Mike Zimmer's system. I had a good conversation with Damone Clark just yesterday uh, about the signing of Eric Kendricks and the retirement of LVE and like how that works. And, you know, Damone was very um, – he was progressed well under LVE because of the mentoring that happened with Leighton Van Der Esch. And in the absence of that, you could see DeMond kind of have some no struggles. Question. Now, you bring in a, another veteran, another former All-Pro, and Eric Kendrick. In a new system, In a new way. system yeah. who can also, like Brian said, he can sit you down as DeMond Clark and say, this is what Zimmer is expecting. This is your cue. This is your mm-hmm. read. I think that'll help DeMond Clark take a step forward in year three. Yeah, Mike's going to get on these linebackers. He's going to yeah. yell at them. He's going to call them names. And some of them are going to feel sorry <laughs> for themselves. And I learned this in the war room. You just kind of fight back. You yeah. just, you know, you call him an MF or two, and then it kind of works Kendrick's out. Did. Yeah, you just kind of you fight with Mike. He fights back, yeah. and then you hug it out, and everything's and cool. he respects yeah. you because you fought yeah, back. You know, right? I, my, yeah, Mike, Mike, and I used to battle quite a bit, and I to this day I love Mike. And I, 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 I'll say this: I've said on several platforms, Mike 
Mike, Mike might come in here and save the day for this team. I know the roster and stuff doesn't look bad, but Mike is going to make this thing buttoned up on the defensive mm-hmm. side of the ball. Which is the part that we all have been like, man, at times yeah. they just don't look like they Green are. Bay game, they look yeah. very disconnected yeah. playing football. That's exactly right. All right, we appreciate you guys joining us. We will be back. Oh, I was going to speak too. Go, Amber. She was. Dang. Sorry. I was... Just say it, damn. See? <laughs> I said dang. Right, that's okay. With a G. Oh, I'm sorry. Dang. Of who? <laughs> of who? I was going to say, listening to Brian's counting report, I don't like hearing the fact that he's a step behind, you know, tick. in closing in. J- just, yeah. just because we've seen it before with Layton mm-hmm. at times where he was just a tad bit slow right. and in closing in. And we saw how much that actually affected mm-hmm. that part of the defense and in, and in the field and just – always being just a quick step behind. So don't love that, but I do like the fact, everything that you guys said, the the relationship that he has there. He's been, what, nine years yeah. in the in the league? So that's a long time, and that's good to have someone like that with that kind of experience. Yeah, I will say this, though, quick, real quick. When you said a tick slow, I don't take it as he's a tick slow all the time, all number the time. one. No. But I also didn't take it as, like, I think part of that is he's a tick slow compared to what we saw in Minnesota where yeah. he was playing at an all-pro level. If you like, think that's the guy, you're not. It's, it's right. a it's different guy. It's not that guy, dude, yeah. But the flow, the part of the move into the ball and stuff is not So you're comparing out when he was at his best, best. Yes, exactly. Right. I've seen which, him play. Which, by the way. We've all seen him play at a, a tremendous level. Yeah. Right. You could say that about Tyron Smith. Like, Tyron yeah. Smith ain't the Tyron Smith from back a long time ago. But, but Tyron still, Smith can still play, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I think that's the point. Yeah. Like, the dude can play. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of How he's not he the same now? guy he was. Uh, 29, I want to say, if I'm not mistaken. But I would also say when it comes to him being a tick slower, yeah, you contextually put it up again. It's him versus him, not him yeah. versus right. Right, what you're okay. saying in the locker room, the present locker room. But also, I, I would tandem him with, we talked about Damone, but Overshone, when he's back, yep. he's mm-hmm. back in full form. Though we haven't seen him in regular season snaps, you saw him in the preseason. Speed. The, yes, speed. He's right there, instinctual, and he Week has nine. the ability to get over there. So <laughs> I think when you combine overshown prime overshown when he's back and he's ready to go and demon clark crossed. possibly taking a, a step yeah. forward and then eric <laughs> kendrick's being able to mentor and still play at a high level i think the linebacker core is is solid it's it's the dts that we got to figure out yep. <laughs> Mozzie smith <laughs> all right we appreciate you guys joining us we're back next week and uh, we'll jump back in we'll have more to talk about on the uh the the, the roster and how it's filling out and where the cowboys We'll talk about next week some of the holes that we think the Cowboys really got to focus yeah. in on and where they got to grow uh, here heading into the draft. Until then, for Patrick Walker, Brian Broaddus, and Amber Garcia, I'm Derek Eagleton. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!